What's up, y'all? This your boy JP. I hope everybody's having a beautiful day. I'm actually outside my house and it's raining pretty bad. But uh, I was thinking to myself, I said, you know what? I do a lot of radio install videos. I wonder if you guys know how to set your EQs and, and your uh, crossovers and all that type of stuff. So that's what this video is about. And if this is your first time tuning in to the channel, please consider subscribing because these are the type of things that we do here. Car audio tutorials, radio removals, Q&As, all type of installs, anything car audio related. Let's go ahead and get started. So every radio isn't going to give you all these audio options. I have the Kenwood DDX6706 and uh, it lets me dive really deep into the audio settings. But the majority of your radios is going to at least have your fader and balance, your EQ settings, and some form of crossover. So that's what we're going to talk about. First, let's actually talk about the fade and balance. So let's just say one day you get inside the car and you notice that your music is a little off. Like maybe one of your speakers might have blown or maybe something's just not playing or working right we can actually fade our music to the front rear or balance it to the left or right to figure out which speaker is not actually working it's, let's just say it's the right rear speaker that's out so we got good volume in the front so we're not worried about that but if we fade everything to the rear and we notice that it's a little faint if we go to the left and then hear that oh, okay we do have a speaker over there but if I fade to the right I don't hear anything that lets you know that your right rear speaker is either not connected or it may be blown let's just say you're hearing some rattling inside one of your door panels and you can't figure out what it is it's not actually the speaker but there's something inside the panel that's going on so you might want to fade it to the front on the left side or the right side to make sure that you can pinpoint where that noise is coming from let's say that those rear speakers are blown and we can't stand it what we can do is we can take that and we can actually just fade it more towards the front and that's going to allow us to put the listening position on those front channels so you can barely hear the rear so it could be just enough to where you can get that rear feel or we can completely cut the rear free frequencies off I mean cut the rear speakers off make sure that's in the center and then now all of our sound is coming directly from the front uh, if everything is good we can definitely go to the center and but that's pretty much what you would use your bet your balance and your fader for next let's get into our EQ so this is your 13 band equalizer and why do they call it 13 bands because there's 13 individual points on these uh different hertz levels down here at the bottom which is what these numbers represent so of course your lower number represents the lower frequencies which would be your bass your higher number represents your higher frequencies which would be your your highs this stuff in the middle guess what those are your mids so of course you can have your pre-select um eq so nine times out of ten it usually comes with flat unless you have pioneer pioneer starts you off on powerful but either way just different genres of music have different uh you know different levels that sound best so if you go over here to pop they don't really mess with the bass but the mids they actually go up and they do the exact same thing for every other genre that they have on here now you do have well, this radio actually has four different user presets. So these allow me to customize how I like my music to uh, sound. So if I like my stuff really, really bassy, I can take my lower hurt and go straight to the top, even though I will not do that. But uh, you can literally go in here and listen to music. And that's what I usually tell the client. When you go in here and you tune your stuff, of course, you got your custom preset settings. Me personally, I like my stuff to be flat and then I can tune everything on my amplifier but can't get in here and make your own custom settings let's just say you're listening to some jazz and you like the jazz but you know that when you listen to the jazz that you like to listen to that this is a little much or not enough what we can do is use our jazz as our starting point and then we can go ahead and start to customize it now you see when I click that it automatically got off of jazz because it's no longer the jazz setting it is now our custom setting so I'm sitting here I'm listening to my music I like the way the mid sound but I want a little bit more tweet so I come up here so I can get more highs I can do this just so I can get more mid and more vocal and let's just say I want a little bit more bump on the bass I can go up to 7 DB or let's just say I got my bass coming from my sub I can go down and put that boy on zero and then now that is saved as my custom setting on when I like listening to my jazz music now let's get into this crossover now when I go into my crossover it asks me to basically let the let the radio know what type of vehicle it's in a lot of your radios don't have that so I'm gonna come back to this part and we're just gonna go straight to the crossover part 
Now, if you look right here at the at the top on the sub, it has a LPF, and on the front and rear, there's a HPF. What that stands for is high pass filter or a low pass filter. So that basically means that there is a Hertz level or a crossover point that we will set to where on the sub side, we are only going to allow a certain amount of Hertz and down to come through. And then on this side, we're only gonna allow a certain amount of Hertz and up to go through. Basically on the front and the rear, we're gonna cut out the lows. And then on the sub, we're gonna cut out the highs. So on this part right here where it says slope, a lot of people don't understand what that is. And I'm gonna tell you exactly what it is right now. Your slope is how many dBs you are losing per octave past your crossover point. So what does that basically mean? Let's just say we don't want our front and rear speakers playing nothing lower than 100 hertz. So we're gonna click on front, which is gonna highlight our blue, uh, our blue line, and we're gonna take our uh, cutoff point to 100 hertz. So that's 90, that's 100, and you see it move 10 spot, uh, two spots back. So as you can see, we set our crossover cutoff point at 100, but since we have a negative six dB slope, it's kind of wide, so we're still allowing things 100 hertz and and lower to come in, just not as much. But if we want this thing to be more of a steep slope to where we're closer to our cutoff point, then we would take that negative six dB and then watch this part of the line go this way to a negative 24 dB octave, which means once it goes to 100 hertz, it's going more almost straight down to where nothing over 100 barely is coming through. So as you can see, negative six dB, our crossover point is at 100, but it's still allowing some to come through. Not that much, but when we go to negative 24 dB, we are cutting all those frequencies out. And then you can go to rear, which will highlight your orange and take that to 100 and then do the same thing. And then go to negative 24. And then you wanna to go to your subwoofer. And if you want, you can put your subwoofer on 100 as well, which will bring it more towards the uh, that. And then you can do your slope on that as negative 24. So it kind of blends, uh, it kind of meshes well together to have the same crossover point and then have your 24 dB octave kind of go down as well like that. Me personally, I usually get my crossover point at about 80 Hertz. That just sounds good to me. Uh, for my sub, I usually keep it at about 24 dB octave. Um, for the rear, we go back to 80. Those can usually be at about uh, 18. I'm not really uh, too strict on that for real, for real. That sounds good to me. That's my personal preference, and that's how I usually do my crossovers. Now, over here with my radio, if you have Kenwood or, or some of your pioneers may do this as well, the radio wants to know what type of car are we in. So you can go to car type, and then you can say, hey, I'm in a, in a full-size car or a sedan. I am in a compact, like a Prius. I'm in an SUV, whatever, whatever. And then you can let them know what size is your front speakers by clicking the front speaker and letting them know what size is there. If you have a Ford F-150, then you probably want to go to, doesn't necessarily have truck, but let's just say SUV. And then you want to do six by eights for your front. It's in the lower door area. And when you click on the rear, so you're probably going to do six by eights in the rears because those are six by eights all the way around in the lower door area. And for your sub, you just let them know if you have 10s, 12s, 15 inches or over. And then now it kind of helps the radio understand what type of environment that it's in. Well, that's about it for this video. We went over the fade balance, the EQ settings, and the crossover. If it's something that I missed, please feel free to go ahead and leave me a comment. I do my best to try to uh, comment back to you guys. Sometimes it may take a little bit because I literally get like 20 to 30 comments each day, and I still have a full-time job. So I will get back to them as soon as I can. Other than that, if you guys found any type of value in this video, please hit that like button. Don't forget to subscribe, comment, share. All that good stuff, man. We just hit 16,000 by the time this video uh, dropped. We just hit 16. So I'm appreciating everybody rocking with me, appreciating the growth. When I get to 20,000, I'm probably going to do a giveaway. I don't know. I might give this radio away. Either way, love y'all. Y'all have a blessed day.